Hi, and welcome to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, your host and a multimedia artist living in Prince George, BC. And today we're going to paint a lovely Northern light scene with some snowmen. So let's get going. On my palette, I have an explosion of colors. These are all analogous colors, ranging from a teal blue, which is the lightest one, into a cobalt blue, an ultramarine blue, phthalo green, and then just some titanium white. You'll notice that the white is thicker than the other colors because it is a professional gray white, and we're going to need that because we're going to be painting right on a pre-prepped black painted canvas. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is take my wide brush, dip it into my water just so that it's got some nice flow to it. And I'm gonna go right in to some teal and I'm gonna dip it also into some cobalt blue. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and get some of that ultramarine. So I have triple loaded my brush and we're gonna come in here and start nice and low and just drift those colors in a nice wavy pattern up and over the canvas. Now, as I collect more color on my brush, I will also be adding the green. And phthalo green is just a really nice bright green, perfect for these lights. Now, what you wanna do is get in, cover it, and then get on out. You want all of your lines in this to be nice and organic smooth and flowing and giving them a little bit of a wave is really pleasant too. Now one thing I think about as I head over to the edges is I want this area to be dark and this area I will leave a little lighter. So think of it as like a vignette. And the fact that I have a little water on my brush is going to thin these colors out ever so slightly while I'm adding them to the canvas. That way, when we get into, to keep it dark, that way when it dries, it's gonna look really nice. I'm looking to balance out these sides. So I'm gonna add some teal in here and there. and then keep going. So triple loading, sometimes quadruple loading the brush. Keeping the darks in the corner, and we're just gonna vignette it in. So one of the things to note too is while you're brushing, like my brush strokes are very light, very light-handed. I'm not putting a lot of pressure I'm just allowing that paint to slip right off the brush. And that is really effective in these paintings where you really don't want to over blend. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is they get into an area and they just do these little tiny strokes and the next thing you know, there's no color variation. So get in and get back out. I'm gonna fix that by adding some white and Having brush strokes in a painting is not a bad thing. It keeps it painterly. And I'm gonna keep it a little dark at this counterpart midsection here. Cause like I said, we wanna vignette this a bit. Okay, hey, as I run through here, I'm just checking that I don't have any really cut off lines, anything that makes me think that I need to continue the stroke through. I watch for color balance. So I see I have more green on this side. I have more blue on this side. I wanna add some green in here. So there's some green. And I know I'm gonna put some mountains in here. So that's why I'm kind of having the Northern Lights come up and out. And I'll throw in the darker blue. So this is that ultramarine blue. And I'm just doing a few strokes so that there is just, it. you wanna keep some of the lights light and some of the darks dark. And by, in order to do that, you have to throw in a dark beside a light to make it pop. That was one of the things that I struggled with in the beginning. 
was how to make the colors pop and it has everything to do with keeping lights light and darks dark and putting them beside each other so you have that contrast that you need. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just going to again just throw in a little bit very delicate strokes here and there and then I'm going to feather them out very lightly just to give the illusion of some lights up in the sky. Now we talked about acrylic drying 20% darker so if you think it's pretty dark um, or pretty light it, don't worry about it it's going to it's going to turn darker. In fact, it'll change entirely in 24 hours. Okay, that's good enough for now. I think I like some of the way these strokes are going. I'm going to move into the mountains. So for the mountains, as we move down the canvas, I'm thinking not to start the mountains right smack in the middle, but to come down a little bit further so that we have that nice sort of two-thirds it's all about the sky and then we'll lower the mountains down here and they'll be off in the distance and then our snowman will kind of pop up on the side with a few trees so I'm gonna go ahead and this time I'm getting right into the white this is again the thick white it's a professional grade white so it's pigment loaded I'm gonna start with that first and I'm going to make a mountain scene so if you ever are making mountains the one thing you want to avoid is doing something like this okay because this doesn't look organic but if you do do that it's okay because you can fix it so what you want to do is have your one mountain come up higher than the other on the peaks and then shift on down cross on over and head on up okay so I'm just looking for you know some organic looking mountains. I don't want anything to be the same height, so I'm looking straight across here, and this mountain is the taller one. And it kind of comes down and then heads up and over and out again. So, fix this peak over here. You can see that I'm using both the flat right edge of the brush, and then as I come down, I'll use right the, the side of the brush. This is a flat brush, perfect for this. And um, it is, I believe, a one and a half inch brush. It's appropriate for the size of the canvas. So make sure when you're painting to use a size appropriate brush. That will get it done quick for you. So now what I'm going to do is fill this in. I don't want this to be perfectly white because how will my snowman stand out if this is all perfectly white? So I, I am keeping some other colors on my brush. Typically the green and the cobalt blue which adds some shadow and it also adds a little bit of reflection from the northern lights. I am putting my color on fairly thin too um, and that is so that I can keep going. I will have some dry time to move around this canvas. Okay, adding a little bit of teal, a little bit of cobalt blue into my white here. And I'm just really going to just cut in down below, drift on over. I'll put a little bit of water on my brush too. If I feel that this is too thick, just to make this bottom bit nice and smooth to paint on. Okay, and you want sideways strokes, so horizontal long strokes. And you can have a few going up and a few going down because of course mountains they, they peak like that. Okay, so that's a pretty good base for that. I'm going to now go right into the white and I want the tops of these mountains to be a lot more whiter on the edges and then cut down the hillside, down the mountain. Just here and there though, see how that came down and now we have the shadows, the blues are in that section there. We can cut down here too. These are just the peaks. Mountains are really easy and they're a lot of fun to paint.
And I like, you know, when you have a gully and you're up skiing, you have like a ridge. So we're just gonna run some ridges here. And you never want to ski into the gully. That is, that's where you'll get trapped. And then you'll have to have ski patrol come and get you out of it. And I think I'm gonna go on the other side of this as well. So the gully part peaks will just sort of come on up. And that's good. I'm gonna dig right into it too much because we are gonna put some trees on. So the other thing is, is if you don't necessarily like your mountains, don't worry about it because we will add some trees to this and they will look fantastic. All right, so let's see. We're gonna go back up to our sky here. And um, I can see that there's a couple parts I don't like. I don't, I want this to be a little bit smoother with some white and green. So let's just go ahead and shift some white. I still had white from the mountains on my brush. So I'm gonna just add that color in there and I'm gonna quickly go and rinse out my brush. Keep a little bit of water on it and see if I can just manipulate that white around and out just to hide that little spot of blue that I didn't really like there. And if you want your Northern Lights to go in one direction, then great. If I've got mine in a couple different directions. I'm gonna rinse my brush again, a little bit of water on it. I'm gonna manipulate this side. Maybe come up a bit there. Okay, and that's much better. And that makes me happier. Now we kind of have two sort of flows to this Northern Lights and I like that it's curving up this way. So while I let this section dry a bit, um, we're also gonna throw a few stars in here and I really enjoy stars because they're easy to do. You can get a toothbrush and uh, just your used one's fine. And I'm rinsing it out in my water bucket. I'm gonna put some white on here. I'm gonna move a white to the section of my palette so I can add some more water to it because it needs to be fairly liquid so it comes off your brush. And if you're good about this, you're not gonna get it anywhere in your house. So once you have your brush, toothbrush completely loaded, the trick is to come uh, and pull back on it so that when it springs forward, it sprays forward. So let's go ahead and throw in some stars. This is a great way to also hide any imperfections, anything that you don't like on your canvas. And what's not to love about a galaxy? Some stars and the northern lights. Look how refined that is. See, so practice um, down on a piece of paper, but remember the whole deal is to pull back on the toothbrush and when it springs forward, that direction it's springing is what's going to get the paint. And that's how you can save your house by not uh, getting paint everywhere. Now I'm switching to just a smaller flat brush um, just because now I need to put in my snowman and my trees will be done. Actually, do my trees with another brush, but let's do the snowman first. That way we can build it up. So I'm taking my, this is a half inch flat brush, and I'm going to go right into the white paint, the titanium white, get it loaded, and let's see. So now the question is, what part don't you like on your canvas because that's where you're going to put your snowman and I'm thinking for mine I'm going to put him right over here and he will sort of like look up at this northern lights or I could put him here so hard to choose sometimes let's put him over here okay I'll start with the base just around it doesn't have to be perfect, just a round snowball. Tape, and then I'm gonna add another one on top of that. Slightly smaller. Sometimes it's tricky when you're 
So if, you, if you're having trouble, switch your brush up. And I may do that for the top here because I can see that I'm making this too big and this bottom needs to be bigger if that's the case. And I will get another small brush for the head. And this is just a round brush, just a, I think a number two round. Now, if you don't want to put a snowman in yours, you don't have to. I just like that it's a little whimsical and fun. And if you have kids, this is just a great winter project for you. When you are at home thinking about what to do and you can choose something like this. All right, anything you don't like with your snowman can be covered up with a scarf or, you know, other fun things. Okay. So now I'm gonna think about some trees and I'm for the trees. Well, this is part drying and we'll build that up. What I'm gonna do is get into the ultramarine blue that exploded on my palette here. I'm going to also dip it into the green and I am using my round brush for this and I'm going to put a few trees down here so they come up with a trunk and then I zigzag them down. You can just fishtail them out which is basically just uh, do them like um, a fish bone and wiggle them out. Just make sure that in your tree you have some gaps showing so that and you can see the nice uh, background and make sure that your branches come out further as you come down. So some folks I know they do a tree and they don't like it but it's because the tree looks like a rectangle and what you really want to watch for is that your branches are growing out longer, that they are in fact coming in front of the trunk and then all the way down and out. And then what I do is twist my brush at the bottom and then pull that branch out like that. Now we're going to put some snow on this tree because clearly this is wintry, but that is the start. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a few more of those. So again, that's the ultramarine blue into the phalo green. This time I think I'll put one back here. Make sure you have a good tip on your tree too, because a good tall tip is a indicator of a good tree. It just is very aesthetically pleasing. And then as I come down with my brush, twist it and come in front of the trunk. And that's pretty good. And you should have an odd number of trees. So now I need a few more trees. And I'll put another one there. This one's going to be taller. I think this will be my tall tree. And the tip sort of fades out here in the top because it's also, you know, around the sky. But that's okay because we're going to put snow on it and it's going to look good. It will have the contrast that it needs and it will be defined. Again, turn brush, come down, pull up. Make sure that branches are all kind of coming in. Into, and you don't want to go too thick with this because remember this has to dry and you'll be waiting forever if you've got globs of paint on this. As you can see, this tree has more green on it than this. So I'm going to put some green on it just for some balance and some variety of color. Let's see, we'll put another little tree over here by the snowman. 
This will help, this will be a big tree. Let's put the biggest tree over here. This will help, uh, you know, have the, the snowman will be sort of vignetted by trees and the northern lights. More paint on the brush here. Try to get this branch to come out a little further, a little bit more up so it's not so weighted down. Fix that branch there. Now you have a, dis a choice to make. Now this tree can come in front of the snowman or it can just end up behind the snowman. That's a personal choice you can make. I'm going to bring it um, up to the snowman and then around. But I might change that. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. You can always change it. If you don't like it, it's just paint. You can paint right over it. And we got one, two, three. It's almost like he's peeking out from the tree and. Uh, yeah, that should be fun. And now we have four trees, so last tree. Let's put that one. Hmm. I like this right here, so I don't want to change that. So maybe we'll put another one. Now we'll put a little one down here instead. Because maybe that snowman is further into the bush. It's almost like a little segment of Narnia. Snowman's hiding out in the Arctic. And this time the tree will come in front of the snowman on that side because it is in front of them. So that's nice, I like that. Uh, one of the things that I didn't do today is bring orange for the nose. But, uh, so I'm gonna just adjust this so that it's kind of, a, I'm gonna keep it an analogous painting. And what that means is that these colors are all on the color wheel together. And uh, that makes this whole painting work. So, I mean, if you have orange and you wanna put a little carrot nose coming off, looking at the sky, go for it. I'm gonna stick with white and some black just to be color consistent today and because I forgot my orange. So just grabbing a little bit of black paint there. I'm going to keep a scarf going in blue. So here is my scarf. And we'll just break it up there and have that scarf sort of Float down the snowman here and then over to that side. Notice how I left the little white areas in here so that that would uh, be broken up in the shape and look a little bit better. I'm going to do, let's see. We're gonna say that it's looking this way. So put the little dots there and got a dot for the eye. And let's put a little hat on them. Maybe a toque. Let's go with a toque. Just a rounded toque. And let's see. We will do. I think we'll keep. Like, we'll say that there was snow on the nose today. And we'll stick with white. And if you make a mistake on it, it is not the end of the world. See, this nose doesn't really look like a carrot. So I'm taking my little brush that's flat, cleaning it off, and I'm erasing some of the paint. And there we go. <clears throat> and let's put some little cool buttons on the belly.
and then you can stick arms. This one you won't be able to see so much because it's behind the tree. And now we'll just add some snow to the trees. So in this, you're just basically adding white to the tops of the branches. Make sure that you come down them as you're working. And if it's still wet, wait for this to dry. Mine's dry okay enough for me to get away with this. And I'll go over and get these ones. Keep it, remember, if snow falls on it, it's gonna be on the tops of the branches, right? And you wanna leave gaps as you're coming down to show that there's some uh, shadows and some branches. And don't forget to come down in front of your tree with your white, because obviously the branches come out in front, not just sideways. I'm gonna keep this one lighter coming towards the snowman here, just for that contrast, because he needs to be the whitest on here. And otherwise, he will fade into the tree. And this one's pretty wet still, so could have let this one dry a bit, but this is supposed to be a nice quick little painting, so let's keep on going. up some of this. Scarf. I almost want to make not a toque anymore. I'm going to just fix this hat. There. You can fix a hat at any time and make it however you'd like it. I'm just gonna give him a top hat. Yeah, I think the orange for the nose would have been better, but we're improvising today. And we're gonna do a little bit of snow on the rim of the hat and on the top. And we'll add some black on their nose, just so it doesn't, not so obstructive. Okay, so now we're going to sign off on this painting. And that's it for this easy, fun one. You have yourself an artful day.